This is a business. Hi, hey, it's Chad on Drumeo. I'm still here. I'm just working me. Not bad for fucking not playing it. Fucking 25 years. In 2009, I formed a group with Sammy Hagar, the Red Rocker, Michael Anthony, the bassist vocalist of the Mighty Van Halen, and guitar wizard Joe Satriani. Grew a group called Chicken Foot. Terrible name. Cabana. I grew up on, you know, Van Halen and Montrose, and, you know, we became friends, and Chili Peppers were taking a break, and we got together and wrote some songs and made a record. This song, Soap on a Rope, um, just kind of got this swingy, I don't know how to pay other to explain it, other than like a swing rock feel for you drum nerds out there. You know, just playing along to the accents of the music and the arrangement and trying to do, you know, Fails that I felt were appropriate and exciting going into each section. So, you know, how the kick drum was, it has some little bit of spice to it to kind of keep it bouncy. And, and then the accents, you know, sometimes they're on the downbeats and other times they're on the upbeats, every other one. It's just, you know, <laughs> like a fucking John Deere, like just. <laughs> that's Soap on a Rope, which is a weird title. So that Rick called me, Rick Rubin. Would you like to come play on a Bhutan Clan <laughs> remix? I'll be right there! And Tom Morello playing guitar, doing all this Tom Morello shit. And, uh, you know, Wu-Tang is like fucking Staten Island's finest. Incredible. The way they just, I mean, they're just incredible. And what a, an honor to be on that song and, and uh, just to have free reign and just just play the hardest shit. And they were really, it was cool. They had already done the vocal and they came in and was like, yo. They didn't know it was me and I was standing there listening to a play the back. They didn't know I had played on it. You know, yo, the drummer's hard, man. The drummer, the drummer's hard. <laughs> I just stood there <laughs> and then they walked out. It was awesome. Cool, right? Yeah. The sub bass kicks in. A Dulipa. Um, I just played. On, uh, literally, I just played on one song on her her record. Um, Future Nostalgia is the name of the record, I'm not, I'm not sure. My friend Andrew Watt is uh, a quite the producer extraordinaire, and he's working with her. And Dua Lipa and her team and her crew and whoever were writing this song were in the studio and it's in the basement. And I came down and they were just finishing up the session. They had just kind of written everything pretty much. Andrew's like, oh God, I'm so glad you're here. We were just talking about this song needs live drums. And I'm like, here we go, <laughs> great. And I hadn't heard no one. I didn't know what it, what it was, but I you know, trust Andrew. So literally, they all left and um, we did this, uh, it's a track called Break My Heart, but this was just literally putting drums over a pretty finished track. There was some uh, drum machine on it already, but they just wanted a little, that kind of disco funk thing. In a situation where you're, you're sort of the artist band, if it's a singer, you know, just do whatever they need or want to, to help make it feel good, what's it right, there's no, I'm not trying to get my thing in there at all, I want to just play, I want to like be the drummer in their band for that two weeks or whatever it is while you're making that record. Um, it's a challenge, but that's kind of how it goes.
Iggy Pop, what can you say that hasn't been said? He's a fucking legend. Great James Osterberg. So I got to play on his record recently, but this is the first single off the record. It's called Frenzy. And we wrote this myself, Andrew Watt, who produced the record and played guitar on most of it, and Duff McKagan, the Guns N' Roses bass player. We've, we did Ozzy's first record together. We've done some other things, and, and we played on a, and he played with us on a few of the, the Iggy uh, songs. And the thing about the drumming with the Stooges and uh, that, you know, it, it, I think when Ig said this to me, it's like they were like, their rhythm section, um, they were like, the Ashton Brothers were like, almost like an R&B players. Like it wasn't bashy. Some people, when they hear this, they think it's just fucking hard. And, and it's really swingy and rolly and pockety. And uh, it's not like, you know, bang your head type stuff. So there's a lot of nuance to the, I think one of the things that made them so great, and they were such unique players and what a chemistry of that band. We were trying to pay homage to that and do a, a new exciting thing for Ig with, with this kind of track behind him. So here comes a little thing called Frenzy. <laughs> This is a B-side to Snow, the song Snow, from Stadium Arcadium. It's a track called, I think it's called I'm Not Your Domino? I'm Your Domino? What is it? I'll be your domino. I'll be your domino. God, yes I will. It's a poppy little disco, little funk, you know, open hat thing with the drums and Flea's got quite a, quite a bass line and John plays two notes in the verse. And that's all that's needed, and uh, it's got a cool group. Down on the river tonight, take off your panties and thighs. I'll be your domino, sit back and watch it go. It's so emotional, I got an ocean flow. And when a star gets bent, I'll be a falling man. That's a fun one, man. We have to put that motherfucker back in the set. Uh, I've never played that since we recorded it. Be so fortunate to play on Ozzy Osbourne's last two solo records and when they came out last year, uh, Patient Number Nine. The verse to me was, I remember when we were writing it, it was like, it almost had like a Led zeppelin -y kind of feel to it. I remember Robert Trujillo was playing a bit and he was like, do do and do do and do. It was almost like Kashmir esque kind of modern y, no more tears just vibe of Ozzy's thing. Yeah, and then when the chorus comes in, it, it just has those stops and you get to hear. Ozzy's voice, a la War Pigs and that stuff. We were always like, what's our favorite shit that like Ozzy does, you know? And, um, so that was kind of the thought behind that riff. And I mean, and then Jeff Beck, the great fucking Jeff Beck is just ripping all over it, which is amazing and inspiring. And it's one of the last things that he did. And he was really happy to be part of it, which was so cool. And so um, again, I'm just honored to, to be part of it. Very important. Can you hear? Are we clear? Clear for lift off. Take off. Come in. 
know how Chili Peppers took Pearl Jam on their very first tour in the fall of 1991? We used to say we've been friends for over 30 years, played together quite a bit, but I had the chance to make a record with him last summer. And uh, Ed's amazing. He's an amazing singer, obviously, songwriter, person. And uh, it was just fun. It was a week. We wrote a bunch of songs together. Came about really quickly. This was one of the first things that he had, and it didn't have drums on it, but they loved the music. So he played it for me, and he was like, what do you think? Um, what do you hear on this? And it, I, it felt like kind of a U2-ish, Larry Mullen kind of thing. That seemed to work, but I had to come out with a, come with a part that fit the music and tell the pattern. They do, especially in the verses and the chorus. I get to embellish it as the song grows and performance-wise, but for the most part, there's a lot of space and you know, you get the kick drum going and, and floor on the floor and some Tom stuff and some kind of military roles. Yeah, I, that's a great song and um, fun to play and a little bit different. And um, yeah, there's Eddie. Time rock and roll, baby. Yeah. This song, song we did, the Chili Peppers did with LL Cool J for the Howard Stern's movie. I don't know when that was, but it was in the late 90s. And this is kind of, uh, a, you know, to me, like a James Brown-inspired drumming track, my own kind of take on it. And um, that had, song has a lot of space, and obviously there's a lot of room for groove, and there's tons of grace notes and ghost notes and that Clyde Jabo kind of thing, my own version of that, but um, in a little probably more aggressive manner but I think it fits the song. So, um, yeah, that's uh, aptly titled Make Your Own Rules. It just comes back to like choices and taste and your musical choices. You make on the drums, you find a good groove that works. And then you, the little embellishments are you, the musical choices you make on the drums. Sometimes it's fills, sometimes it's cymbals. I don't always make the right choice, <laughs> for sure. But, you know, you gotta take some chances. Make the rules, break the rules. 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 Woo!